You must have heard the term force field before. What does force field remind you of? In science fiction movies or TV shows, there can be a force field. You cannot see the force field, cannot feel it, until you walk into it, and then you feel a force. It's like in this room here, there is a force field. You cannot see it, cannot feel it, until you put something in it, and you get a force acting on the object. What kind of force field is this? It's the gravitational force field. We use the idea of force field to explain forces that do not require contact. Which forces do not require contact? Gravitational, electric, and magnetic. So we can talk about gravitational field, electric field, and magnetic field. But there is no frictional field or tension field. A classic question physicists to ask regarding force field is this. We know that the Earth revolves around the Sun, and what force keeps the Earth in this circular motion? It's the gravitational attractive force between the Sun and the Earth. Now let's say that the Sun all of a sudden disappears the Earth will lose this gravitational force to keep it in circular motion. So what will happen to the Earth? It will fly off tangent to the circle. Like this eraser flying off tangent to the circle when it loses tension that keeps it in circular motion. My question to you is, Will the Earth fly off immediately the moment the Sun disappears, or will there be a delay? Before we answer that question, let me ask you another one. I have a slinky here, and I'm going to drop it. The question is, that after I let go of the top of the slinky, Will the bottom of the slinky begin to fall immediately, or will there be a delay? So, the bottom of the slinky did not begin to fall immediately because somehow the bottom ring of the slinky has to find out that the top has been dropped, so it knows to start falling. How does the bottom ring know that the top has been dropped? The release of the top ring produces a disturbance in the slinky. The disturbance has to travel down the slinky to the bottom ring. This is a mechanical longitudinal slinky wave. When the wave reaches the bottom ring, the bottom ring begins to fall. Now let's go back to the Earth question. So the sun suddenly disappears. How would the Earth find out about it and the nose to begin to fly off tangent to the circle? I mean, even if we look up in the sky, it would take us about 8 minutes to find out that the sun is gone. And why is that? Because that's how long it takes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. When the sun disappears, the last bit of light from the sun will travel past the earth about 8 minutes later. You may have heard that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. If Albert Einstein was right, then the signal that the sun is gone cannot reach the Earth in less than 8 minutes. The sun's disappearance creates a disturbance in the gravitational field. The Earth shall begin to fly off when that disturbance reaches the Earth. But why is this sun disappearing question relevant to the idea of force field? Without the idea of force field, the sun interacts with the Earth directly. So when the sun disappears, the interaction, the gravitational force, should disappear right away. Or we can say that the 
sun creates a gravitational field around it. When the Earth is placed in that gravitational field, there would be a gravitational force acting on the Earth. So when the sun disappears, the force does not disappear until the last bit of sun's gravitational field travels past the Earth. Same for the interaction between, say, two point charges, Q1 and Q2. We can look at the electric force between the two through the idea of electric field. We can say that Q1 produces an electric field around it. When Q2 is placed in that field, Q2 experiences an electric force. Or, of course, we can say that Q2 produces an electric field around it. When Q1 is placed in that field, Q1 experiences an electric force. By the way, the gravitational field happens to be the gravitational acceleration g. Because the gravitational force equals to mass times the gravitational acceleration, when we put a mass m in the field g, there is a force m times g. And we use capital E for electric field. The electric force on a charge Q placed in an electric field E is Q times E. By the way, the concept of the electric field was introduced by Michael Faraday. Since F equals to QE, the electric field E is the electric force per unit charge. This is the definition of electric field. What do you think the unit for electric field is? It is Newton's per coulomb. Because we cannot see or feel the electric field until we enter or something enters the field. So if we want to know the electric field at this location, for example, we can just put a charge at this location and measure the force acting on the charge and then divide the force by that charge. This charge is what we call a test charge. We want the test charge to be very, very small because we don't want it to disturb the original charge distribution. We don't want the test charge to polarize anything or induce any charge separation. Usually, you would see this equation written as F equals to QE, and we can use it for a charge placed in an electric field. This Q here is the charge that is placed in the field, not the charge that produces the field. This field E is produced by some other charges. Let's look at an example. A 2000 newtons per coulomb eastward field is in this region. Find the electric force acting on a positive 3 nano coulomb charge placed at this location. We're placing a charge in an electric field, so we can use that equation F equals to QE. The charge is 3 nanos, 3 times 10 to the negative 9th. The electric field is 2,000. So this will give us 6 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. And because this is a positive charge, that means if Q is positive, the force in the field must carry the same signs. For vectors, that means they are in the same direction. So if the electric field is eastward, the electric force on this positive charge in the field must also go eastward. What if uh, this charge placed in the field is uh, a negative 3 nano coulomb instead? What would the electric force on this charge be? If it is a negative 3 nano coulombs, the electric force acting on it would still be Q times E, and I usually just leave the sign out. And find the magnitude of the force that's uh, also 6 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. Now the thing is, if the charge is negative, that means the force in the field would carry opposite signs. For vectors, that means that they are in opposite directions. So if the charge in the field is negative, the electric force on the negative charge would be in the direction that is opposite to the direction of the electric field. So the electric force is westward.